We have a less than a minute now, and I just want to get some thoughts from you on what we are watching today about to take place and the significance of this launch from Starliner. Absolutely. So, you know, it's it's always exciting when a spacecraft, exciting and, you know, a bit of trepidation too, when a spacecraft has humans in it for the first time. And that is what we're about to witness. So this is um, the Boeing Starliner's first launch attempt with humans up to the International Space Station. It's had successful test flights, but you never quite know until uh, people are in it as to, you know, what will happen. So, yeah, we'll hopefully find out in less than a minute. All right. Uh, Gordon, I'm going to ask you to stand by because we're going to listen to Mission Control and watch this. We're now about 30 seconds away. Uh, let's watch this and listen. Uh, again, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Gordon, we'll talk to you in a sec. 25. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Starliner. Godspeed, Butch and Sunny. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. Commander Butch Wilmer there calling down to Mission Control here in Houston that the spacecraft has begun rolling into the right attitude for its ascent. The guidance, navigation, and control officer here in the room seeing good data on that. Are highest, which in Sunny will shortly be passing through Mach 1, where the speed is sound. You got a good throttle up. Starliner and Atlas. Looking good with speeds and attitude increasing as expected. Coming up in less than 20 seconds, the solid rocket boosters will run out of fuel and burn out. Good SRB burnout. Good SRB. Now the fuel in the solid rocket boosters has been depleted, the Atlas main booster stage will be continuing its burn for about the next three minutes. Good handle. Good handle. That, that call, good handle, from Capcom Joshua Kutrick, indicating that the crew now has the ability to initiate an abort manually if needed. All looking good so far. Now two minutes into uh, Starliner's flight and coming up on the solid rocket booster jettison at the two minute and 40 second mark. CLT and that good trajectory. CLT. The solid rocket boosters have now been jettisoned after seeing Starliner through its first 90 seconds of flight. The team on the ground here confirming that it was a good jettison and that the vehicle's trajectory continues to look good. Now uh, three minutes into today's flight. Now 
Atlas booster now throttling back to limit the G-forces on Butch and Sunny. Uh, trying to limit that to around three and a half times the force of gravity you would feel while on the ground. All right, if you are just joining us, we are about two minutes uh, into the launch of the Starliner, the Boeing Starliner, just taking off on time from Cape Canaveral, Florida. I want to bring in my guest who is navigating yeah, this uh, this with us this yeah, morning, Gordon Osinski. Yeah. He's a space expert with the right, Canadian the Lunar ground, Rover Mission. Uh, Gordon, can we they all exhale now? On top of can I stop holding my breath? I think we can, yes. Yeah, I mean, some of the most dangerous and risky and complicated part of the mission is, is already over. You know, there's, there's a way to go until that main engine yeah, cutoff that you can that see down the bottom, but I think we can all take a, a, a big exhale. It really is incredible to watch, isn't it? It is. You know, um, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is the first time that this spacecraft has had people in it. You know, you can test everything that you can and, you know, fingers crossed that this moment goes safely. And uh, I think, you know, it's important for the the international and the U.S. space programs, too, because for the first time, you know, potentially ever, um, the U.S. has two options to get astronauts up to the uh, International yeah, Space Station. Um, with Boeing now, um, this joins SpaceX, who, of course, have been launching astronauts with their Dragon capsule for a few years now. And I don't know if you caught it or if our viewers caught it, but one of the main voices we're hearing from Capcom is Joshua Kutrick. He's a Canadian. Um, so we have a Canadian connection to what we're witnessing this morning. I do want to ask you, though, Gordon, what do you imagine that Butch and Sonny are feeling right now? Oh, I mean, it's hard to put you, you know, yourself. I know I've worked with astronauts for a number of years and, you know, work with them on geology training. These are two of the most experienced astronauts NASA has. And so, you know, I think they're going to be very calm and collected in there. Um, of course, hopefully excited at the same time as well. But they've got, you know, they'll be doing their job watching all of the myriad of controls and just making sure that the spacecraft is... Uh, is behaving properly, um, but hopefully, you know, in a little bit of time as they get higher um, above Earth's atmosphere, they'll be able to, you know, relax a little bit and take in the view and, you know, savor the accomplishment. What would they physically be feeling with the, the force of gravity changing? Yes, I think uh, it was noted uh, a couple of minutes ago that they're going to be feeling about, you know, three and a bit G, so, you know, three times the force of gravity. Um, they've probably been subjected to higher, you know, during testing and, and other space missions, but it's definitely going to be pushing them back in their seats and going to be a little bit uncomfortable. A little bit uncomfortable. Um, okay, so Starliner is expected to dock with the International Space Station at 12.15 on June the 6th. What happens between now and then? And can you talk to us about the mission? Yeah, so this this is a test mission, um, absolutely, and uh, you know a really important one. Between now and then, they'll be making their way up, you know, getting increasingly higher, and then of course the International Space Station is orbiting the Earth uh, very quickly, and so slowly but surely they'll be bringing the Starliner capsule into to match the orbit of the space station and then you know tomorrow morning i guess creep up to it uh, ever so slowly and then eventually dock um they're then going to be spending i think about a week on the international space station you know there'll be more tests of the spacecraft and then of course a really big test is coming back you know through the earth's atmosphere uh, in about a week's time just incredible, again, uh, to watch. And, and there we see the astronauts 
on land uh, before takeoff, Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore. Uh, Gord, thanks so much. Really glad that you could be with us today. We do appreciate you walking us through what we have witnessed today. And in fact, the third time was the charm for the Boeing Starliner. Gord Nosinski is a professor and also a space expert, and he has trained astronauts. All the best to you.